Hello everyone, I've decided to make my own tier list for every gun in the game. So let's get started. In no particular order, we will start with the MP40. The MP40 is a SMG with a steady rate of fire. It has virtually no recoil, which makes it a very versatile weapon. I place it in C tier. The grease gun is an SMG with a low rate of fire. It only takes two shots to drop someone in most cases, but it can be difficult to lend those shots with its poor sights. I place it in D tier. The trench gun is a fun weapon that decimates anyone in close range, instantly killing them. It is decent at getting headshots from medium distances, however the vast majority of engagements in this game are at long range and it has a very slow rate of fire. If you miss one shot, you're likely dead. I place it in E tier. The Car 98 is the standard bolt action rifle for the Germans. It is great for long distances. However, it is really bad for short to medium distances due to it being a bolt action with a slow rate of fire. I place it in D tier. The Thompson is an SMG with a high rate of fire. The real charm in this weapon is its suppression ability, but the recoil can be hard to control compared to the MP40. So, I place it in C tier, just behind the MP40. The M1 Carbine is a semi-automatic rifle for the Americans. It has almost no recoil. However, it is usually a two-shot kill, making it a poor choice given the other options you have for a rifle. I place it in B tier. The Lee Enfield is the standard rifle for the British. It has two variants that are very different. The rifle number four mark one and the smle number one mark three the mark one is a terrible weapon because of how the gun sway blocks your view making your shots take half a second more when you are moving your weapon which makes this weapon very slow compared to other weapons the smle number one mark three is comparable to the car 98 it has a steady rate of fire good sights and is almost always a one-shot kill excelling in long distances. The Mark I is placed in F tier, the Mark III is placed in D tier, just behind the Car 98. The MG34 is the first machine gun you have when playing as the Germans. It has a relatively short amount of ammo per belt and a relatively slow rate of fire. I place it in C tier because there's no reason to use it after unlocking the MG42 is the second machine gun you unlock as the Germans. It has a very high rate of fire, limited recoil, and a nearly endless belt of ammo, or so it seems when you are playing it. It has the highest suppression effect out of any other weapon in the game, which renders those on the receiving end useless when they're being shot at. Its hip fire is very difficult to control and has a high chance of spraying. This is the best machine gun in the game, but it needs to be deployed to be useful. Since deploying in this game makes you a sitting duck, I place it in A tier. The FG-42 is a machine gun that you can unlock as the Germans in the Automatic Rifleman or in the Sniper class. Its usefulness is significantly different depending on which class you take. The Automatic Rifleman loadout has a fully automatic FG-42. The weapon is good, being a one-shot kill in most cases, but it runs out of ammo super fast with an abysmal five magazines. Also, its recoil is very hard to control making using it as a semi-automatic weapon mandatory. Since it doesn't make sense to choose this weapon over the STG-44, I place it in D tier. The Sniper Class FG-42 is good. It is a semi-automatic weapon with a medium scope. It is the king for taking out anything at medium distances. It has 12 magazines. However, it is not great for short or long distances because the scope is obviously not great for short distances and the gun takes two or sometimes three shots at long distances. Sometimes distances that seem like medium distances are treated like long distances, where an iron sided weapon would be a one shot kill, but this one is a two shot kill. I assume because of the scope being nerfed or something like that. Also, 
The sights are confusing and hard to get used to, unlike other scoped weapons where the crosshair is more clear. And personally, scoped weapons in this game have a lot of sway. Using iron sights is always far better if you can actually hit the target. With all of this considered, I place it in B tier. Interesting fact about the FG-42 is that it had a bipod in public testing, but it was removed before full release. The Sten Gun is an SMG for the British. It has a rate of fire comparable to the MP-40, but it has more recoil, worse sights, and a flash that kind of masks whatever you're shooting at. I really don't want to use this weapon if I don't have to. I place it in D tier. The Browning machine gun is the standard machine gun for the Americans. It has a steady rate of fire, slower than the MG42, but a similar belt size. This weapon is actually better for hip firing when compared to the MG42 due to more control. However, it isn't nearly as good as the MG42's rate of fire when deployed, so I place it in B tier. The Mosin Nagant is the standard bolt-action rifle for the Soviets. It has a surprisingly high rate of fire for a bolt-action rifle. If I were to choose a bolt-action rifle in this game, I would go with this one. This covers all variants of this rifle. I place it in C tier. The Bar is a light machine gun for the Americans. Unlike the Browning, this one is not deployed. It is usually a one-shot kill. It has a slower rate of fire than the FG-42, which gives this weapon more control. However, its recoil can really hurt you in a pinch. I place this weapon in A tier. The PPSH is an outstanding SMG. It has a rate of fire similar to the MG42, but in the palm of your hand. It will completely obliterate people at short distances and suppress them to incapacity if you miss. It's decent for medium ranges, but it is nearly useless for long range. However, since it is one of the best weapons for short to medium distances with its unmatched rate of fire and surprisingly good recoil, I place this weapon in A tier. The DP-27 is the standard machine gun for the Soviet forces. It has a steady rate of fire and almost no recoil when deployed. It seems like it can be handled like the bar, but you have to deploy it to actually use it properly. Otherwise, you have to hip fire. However, it has a very short magazine, which constantly needs to be reloaded. Since you are competing against the MG-42, this weapon is almost useless given the other options to use as the Soviets. I place this weapon in D tier. Also, you may have not noticed, but the disc spins when you are shooting it. The Bren gun is a machine gun you can use as the British. It has a decent rate of fire, but strong recoil, and your field of view is almost completely occluded by the gun's magazine. This makes it a terrible choice given your other options. I place it in E tier because it cannot compare to the Lewis gun is the standard machine gun for the British. It's like a middle ground between the Browning and the DP-27. Not nearly as good as the Browning, but much better than the DP-27 due to its larger magazine. Its accuracy can actually compete with the MG-42 at long distances. I place this in C tier. And if you did not notice, the magazine also spins similar to the DP-27. Sidearms in this game are very bad and should never be used unless you run out of ammo of your primary weapon. Using the medic class with the pistol is useless. You are better off actually having a rifle to help your team than to use this. I place all sidearms in F tier. Flamethrowers in this game are fun, but mostly useless. I find their only use is when there is constant smoke, enemies pushing through the smoke in mass, and you cannot see them. So instead, you could spray the fire into the smoke and burn the floor. However, you won't be alive long if you do that. It would be more useful if it burnt walls and burnt people on the inside of the building touching the same wall, but it does not. It only burns the outside of the wall. It has a short range, it is slower than bullets, and it runs out of gas pretty quickly. It is the worst weapon in the game. It should never be used other than for fun. I place this weapon at the bottom of F tier. 
The STG-44 is an outstanding weapon. It set the standard for the modern assault rifle. It's the king of medium distances. It's a one-shot kill when used within its range. It has low but noticeable recoil. It is an S-tier weapon. The SVT is the semi-automatic rifle for the Soviets. It is a one-shot kill at short to medium ranges and a two-shot kill at long range. It's an S-tier weapon because it is comparable to the Gewehr is the semi-automatic rifle for the Germans. It is a one-shot kill at short to medium range and a two-shot kill at long ranges. It is an S-tier weapon, but still not as good as the M1 Garand is the semi-automatic rifle for the Americans. It is a one-shot kill and seemingly does not matter where the enemy is hit unlike the other two semi-automatics that need direct body shots. It hits like a Car 98, but shoots fast and accurately. Once mastered, no weapon can compare to the M1 Garand. It has endless ammo. It is the best weapon in the game by far. I place it in the top of S tier. Sniper rifles are very similar in this game. I will lump them into one category. The scope is actually detrimental in most engagements as it zooms in too much. You have to be very far away for it to be useful. But even then, players like me can still hit you. I place them in B tier. All right, that is my rank list. Of course, each weapon has its unique situation where it may be an S tier weapon in that scenario. Personally, if I expect a lot of close quarter engagements, such as when in a trench, I want an SMG. If I need to provide suppressing fire from far away, I want a machine gun. If I want to kill the enemy artillery, I want a sniper rifle. For everything else, I want a semi-automatic rifle. So, is there anything important that I missed? Do you agree or disagree with my rank list? Leave a comment below. This video was a massive project for me because I didn't think it would be too hard to make, but I kept thinking of ways to improve it and footage to get specifically for this video. I especially did not enjoy having to grab flamethrower footage again. If you want me to continue to do bigger projects like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you all and I'll see you next time.